Observe, observe, observe. Uh, to me, it's a learning experience. Every single time I'm out there, every single time, I'm learning something. And I don't care if everybody's getting along great or if everybody's fighting, I'm learning something. So observe and learn. And you know, make mental notes. It's, and no rule carries over for all dogs. <coughs> you can't leave a play group attended with less than two people. That's what I'm saying. Two people can be in the yard with four or five little dogs, but then you, nobody can leave, so right? So you're going to have to call somebody in in order to get the dogs out or more in. Uh, uh, never, ever, ever introduce a dog into the group that you feel uneasy about. And I'll tell you right now, there's two dogs, based on what I saw yesterday, that I feel uneasy about that are not going to come into play groups today. And I'll tell you who they are, and I think you know who they are. They might be great, but I feel uneasy about them. But if somebody's real paranoid in there, the dogs feel that. And then they'll, they'll react to that. And I had that situation in North Central, and I actually stopped large dog play groups. Somebody was, I don't, I don't feel good about this dog. I think the dog was all right. The person got so excited, there was a dog fight, you know? And so if somebody's feeling real bad about it, they don't have to be in the play group, and if you need them, then, then just don't bring that dog in and, and still have a play group without that dog. Because I always say, if, if it feels wrong, something's wrong, you know? We're making something wrong if, if we feel wrong, so be careful with that. Go with your gut, you know? And we had a dog that came in to the play group, one of the trainings we did in North Central, and this dog came in, he was kind of cockeyed, he walked crooked and everything, and just from the minute we both looked at each other, we didn't say a word, but we knew. And then at one point during the play group, we both said, I don't feel good about that dog. And the dog went off and pinned another dog near a fence near the entrance, and we both yelled, hey, and Lewis yelled, correct that dog to, to one of the employees. And the person just kind of did one of these, which is not a correction. This is almost like an instigation. And that it's dog just, applause. what's that? It's applause, it's applause yeah. <laughs> and the dog <laughs> latched onto another dog, the other dog, and we knew it was gonna happen. So, you know, we went over and we broke it up and everything, took the dog out, but we knew it was gonna happen. You know, so, and we should have said something earlier, but you know, we, we, were, we were watching. So, and it could have not, nothing could have happened. We could have been wrong, but was that one time when we thought we were wrong, but we were wrong. <laughs> so um, anyway, don't introduce dogs you feel uneasy about. Um, the playground always, 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 always starts with three dogs. And that means three dogs come into the yard simultaneously, set the same time, together, right? So the reason for that is we start with a pack. We control that pack. We control that pack. It's a pack. It's not two dogs. Two dogs is not a pack. So the reason we control the pack right away is so that the pack then defers to us so that when new members of the pack come in, they already have a, a structure, a hierarchy, which refers back to the us, and there's no, there's no challenge to that. And as the members come in, they filter and filter, filter through. So what you're gonna end up doing to start the play group real easy is you, you find the three dogs you're most comfortable with. Now, if he and I go to a strange shelter, then we just look through and kind of go on our instinct and we get three dogs. If we have a shelter, like here, we know somebody like Pete knows a lot of the dogs. He can easily say, these three dogs are good candidates. We'll bring those three in, and then from there, we'll start to filter in more and more and more. And sometimes dogs that can't play can come into, it's probably better to bring them in when you have a larger group, right? So if there's a dog you're a little bit uneasy about, not, un not one you don't feel good about, but one you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure, don't bring them in right away. Don't bring them in with two or three dogs. Bring them in when you got 10 balanced, dogs because then he's going to come in and the pack's going to over control him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So if you bring him in with two or three or you bring him in, in the initial group, he can start a fight with one of those guys because he knows he can, I can win a fight with you. But if there's 10 of you, I'm going to, uh, and that's how the pack a lot of times can dictate behavior um, in what we call pack structure so that they have to kind of fit in. You're not going to go, you know, you might fight one guy, but if he's got 10 friends with him, you're not going to fight him. And eventually, you might be friends with him because you find out, well, he's not that bad of a guy. I'm kind of being a jerk. And that's how we can teach dogs that pack structure. So real, real important. So when those three dogs, you'll see, will be at the gate. And um, one will be on the corner. One will be here. One will be there. And we'll say, bring him in. And when we do, don't go me or now or, oh, hang on. I've been finishing this text. When we say bring him in, as fast as you can walk in, you're going to walk through the gate into the middle of the yard, the middle of the yard, and stand there. Right? And then we're going to start letting dogs sniff and letting them play. And you, you can stack them, but it's not as important in the playgroup thing. We kind of want them to just kind of sniff and we'll steer them a little bit. But when Lewis says, stand like a pole, 
means stand like a pole. That means hold the leash and stand. If the dog starts to go this way, don't go with the dog, because that's what everybody does. Poles don't move. Like he's tethered and you're the tethered. Yeah, you're the telephone pole. He's nailed, his leash is nailed to the telephone pole. And you just stand there. If he goes to that side, no. Comes back over here. He, you want to come sniffing around, you sniff around here. As the groups get bigger, you'll bring one in at a time. As you get the three, and then one will come in at a time. As soon as that group is balanced, we bring the four, fifth one in. That group's balanced, we bring the sixth one in. And it keeps going like that, one at a time. But that new dog always goes to the center of the yard and stands on a pole when everybody else comes around. And there's an incredible importance to correcting the dogs during that time. Right? So that means when the new man comes in, everybody's going to go, oh, the new guy. We teach the group to not bully the new guy by saying, hey, 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 easy, because we've already established that hierarchy and that pack structure. And we tell the new guy, if he starts teeing off, hey, you knock it off too. So each person that comes in, each dog that comes in, I should say, now has a deferred hierarchy. They look at Lewis, they look at me, they look at you, and they go, okay, you know, you start screwing up, hey, knock it off, clatter stick, soft stick to guide him, and I'm going to show you all the tools. Then, and only then, do we drop the leash, let them go around, and then when we're completely, which we're never 100%, but when we're at the 95 to 98% clarity that we think that's going to be okay, then we unloosen, the, we take the, the leash off or the drag line off. There are no collars in our play groups. Ever. ever. Do not ever have a dog on a collar in a play group. The reason for that is twofold. One, the reason, the main important reasons we say is because somebody's going to do something stupid if there's a fight and they're going to reach for that collar. And that collar is right where dogs are going to bite, right? So it's giving me a target where to grab. And it's not that even if I tell you a hundred times, don't grab the dog's collar, you're going to grab it because it's the only it's thing. Instinct, yeah, total instinct. So first is human safety because it's going to make you make a mistake. It's like a bullseye to grab for. And the second thing is if a dog grabs the other dog's collar and that first dog jumps around, spins, that dog's going to get choked to death, and the other dog is going to have his bottom jaw you know, completely cinched. So, and I've seen it happen. I've had friends who have had it. It's happened to in a play yard. When dogs play, there are no collars. Right? They can drag this line around if we're a little unsure. And some dogs will let them drag that line the entire time they're in the yard, because they're just unsure. That's something I can step on. That's something I can grab. And that's something I can correct the dog with if I need to. So that's the only thing the dogs wear. Now, some people say that the, the ID bands, is that what they're called? Yeah. That doesn't matter. Paper. It's going to tear off. The <coughs> yeah, it'll tear off. Yeah, so, so you don't need to take those off. But if a dog, even if a dog came to the shelter relinquished with a collar on, take that collar off before they get in the play group. It's just for your safety and the dog's safety, OK? Um, dogs should be taught basic manners during play group sessions, but don't, it's not a training session, right? And they don't have to play. Know that they just have to not fight. Some dogs you'll see they're not real social, but they're not causing any trouble. That's a good thing. They're still getting exposed and they're getting exercised and they're getting exposed to us and other dogs and they're learning they can't fight. So doesn't mean they all have to play and socialize. We'll see some dogs that are kind of just to themselves, a little bit aloof, but they're not causing any trouble. And when another dog comes over to them, they don't cause any trouble. They might not like it. That's okay. And you'll see as play group, as that dog's in more play groups, he'll get more social. We've had dogs shivering in the corner. Everybody says, take them out. There's a point where you, one might be stressing enough where you take them out. But we had that East Valley. Yeah. There was that little dog, he was just like a mess. <laughs> and they said, take him out. We said, no, no, because he's making himself a mess. Nobody's agitating him or nobody's going over there. The next day he came, well, before the day was over, he'd come and he'd play with a dog and he'd run over like he's proud of himself, you know, like, yeah. and then before it was over, he was running around, he was like the life of the party, you know, but it took him a while, he, he, you know, he was real hesitant and real shy, and he built it up, if we'd have took him out, we'd have ruined a good opportunity for him to get socialized. Yeah. And that's important because we're trying to help dogs learn to be social, right? The only dogs that we will remove from playgroups are ones that are actively looking to get away. Like they're just at that gate just trying to run away, real skittish, because that's going to create a fear or, or a fear drive in another dog. One, Pete, remember that fit? He was trying to jump the fence almost. Finally, I said, come on, Pete, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Because he was stressed too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't want to stress him in there. So if dogs are fighting, if a dog's a troublemaker, he's going to get 
pulled out, if the dog's actively looking to escape the yard, he's gonna get, get, it, get taken out. But if he's just kind of like, you know, avoiding other dogs, no big deal. Actively avoiding is very different. You guys understand the difference between actively avoiding, okay, and avoid. So the reason we haven't put her back yet is because when we brought her out, she displayed some aggression. We corrected that aggression, okay? And then we left her in here. The reason we left her in here is to learn the lesson that she can be in here and doesn't have to be dominant. She's very cool, she's easy, she's chill, she's watching dogs play, and dogs learn by watching. So if she sees other dogs playing and she's not getting taken out of here, she's gonna learn from that. And eventually she'll come back. I guarantee you tomorrow you have this dog out, she'll be wonderful. Friday she'll be wonderful, but right now she's still learning, she's still watching what should be going on. Right? She's looking outside, she knows Pete, but she's not doing, she's not trying to get out of the kennel. She's not, she knows where that door is, she's not using it. She's kind of hanging out over here in the shade. But pay, pay attention to why we left her in here. She got a correction, she kind of broke down a little bit, and now we want to build her up a little bit before we put her away.